everyone. Welcome to MET's first uh, annual youth debate night. This evening, uh, 22 of our high school students will be uh, debating the following topic. Uh, although Islam is a religion of peace, Muslims are not doing enough to combat extremism. The team on my left is the affirmative team. They will be arguing that Muslims need to do more to combat extremism. The team on my uh, right is the negative team. They will be arguing that Muslims are already doing enough to combat extremism effectively. Each speaker has a designated amount of time to speak. And uh, after each speech, they will go back to the tables and regroup for two minutes until the next speaker uh, is ready. Uh, the, the judges here will score each uh, speech individually. At the end, we'll um, combine the speeches and uh, we'll uh, determine who uh, which team has the, um, the highest points. Uh, the debate will last for one hour, and so sit back and relax and enjoy the debate. Thank you. So much. Resolved. Although Islam is a religion of peace, Muslims are not doing enough to combat extremism. Muslim terrorists who commit acts of violence in the name of Islam belie the true meanings and values that Islam promotes, which are peace, cooperation, and mercy. Muslims then feel furious when others depict them as terrorists, and should, but Muslims need to start changing that view by combating extremism and protecting Islam's message of peace. Many Muslims blame the media for the vilification of Islam's name. Yes, the media is partly to blame because it rarely shows peaceful Muslims, but the Muslim world is also to blame. Muslims need to stop committing and responding with ignorant acts of violence every time an attack on Islam is made, because these Muslims give the media material that shows how violent Islam is. If these, acts, if these violent acts committed by the so-called Muslims stop, then the media would have nothing to air that hijacks the name of Islam. One issue we face today, especially in the Middle East, is the lack of democracy which leads to the rebellion of citizens, which results in ruckus, violence, and death. Day by day, the issue continues to rise, which leads to what we call the Arab Spring. If leaders can constantly refuse to allow their citizens the freedom of speech, how can we expect to take a step forward in combating extremism when these actions are only taking us 10 steps back? What is enough when it comes to combating extremism? According to PBS, the number of Americans who negatively view Islam has increased to 40% over the past five years. The Huffington Post states that 10% of all Muslims are terrorists. That's 157 million Muslims worldwide. That leaves the other 90% of Muslims not necessarily peaceful, but silent. And that 90% of silent Muslims doesn't justify the fact that there are still 157 million Muslims out there Still, who still commit acts that mislabel the entire religion. If even half of that 90% were to come together to defend Islam peacefully, then these Muslims would be on their way to overpowering the voices of the extremists. So enough will be when the number of people who negatively view Islam decrease instead of increase. When the silent speak up and Muslims and non-Muslims can coexist without loathing each other. Although Islam is not a religion of peace, Muslims are not doing enough to combat extremism. Recently, a movie was made about the Prophet, which caused a U.S. ambassador to be killed in Libya. Muslims had every right to be angry and defend Islam, but killing was taking it too far. The Huffington Post states that these types of people who get angry at such things don't know much about the Prophet, and if they did, they would know that the Prophet would never respond violently. Being violent is not a trait of Islam, and it's not a trait of the Prophet. Muslims are not acting according to the Islamic principles. The Huffington Post also states that instead of acting according to Islamic principles, Muslims are defending their beliefs by blowing up buildings and killing innocent lives. Before getting frustrated at the fact that no one respects Islam, 
Muslims need to start asking what can they do for others before they ask what others can do for them. Resolve that Muslims are doing enough to combat extremism. The opposition stated that enough is when the negative connotations involving terrorism and extremism are no longer associated with Islam. Whenever there's a stereotype of a people, it's often overlooked that most, if not all, of the people under that stereotype don't actually apply to it. The way moderate Muslims have been approaching the issue is through peaceful words and actions. Individuals like Tamina Kazi go into terrorist and extremist recruit group areas and they educate the youth about why violence is wrong. And they're making real differences that might not be being heard, but they're happening. Groups like the Benghazi Muslims who spoke up against the terrorist act that killed the, um, the American ambassador in Libya, held signs that said, we condemn the humiliation of the Prophet, but not through terrorism, are making changes. And large groups like the Council on, Islamic, on American Islamic Relations and the Islamic Society of North America do interfaith work to make sure that we maintain peace here. The answer to a problem like extremism is not through anything but through dialogue and, mul and a multiplicity of peaceful actions like those done by the people and groups that I just mentioned over a long period of time. If, as the opposition says, this is not enough, is the opposition speaking of an overnight solution to a problem that's been centuries old? The terrorist threat posed by radicalized Muslims has been greatly exaggerated according to a study released by researchers at Duke University and the, Univer and the, and the University of North Carolina. A small number of Muslim Americans have undergone radicalization, radicalization since the September 11th attacks on New York and Washington, a study found. A rate of 17 per year of a 2.6 million Muslim American population in America, according to New York Times. So, why does the opposition state that the number of radical Muslims has increased or they make up a large number of the Muslim population? In fact, most Muslims in several key Middle Eastern and Asian countries hold negative views of ter terrorist networks such as Al-Qaeda. As more and more information comes out and more and more... Okay. Um, why is the opposition stating that the number of rad Muslims that look favorably at terrorist actors is increasing? Thank you. Resolve, Islam is the religion of peace and Muslims are doing enough to fight against terrorism. We oftentimes hear a lot of talk in the media and elsewhere how Muslims are not doing enough to fight against terrorism and extremism. However, there are in fact many, many examples of Muslims who stand up to strive to educate the common people about the, the true meaning of Islam and who fight against terrorism and the killing of innocent civilians. Here are just a few examples. There are people such as Sheikh Yasser Qadi who, started, uh, who educate the people and the majority who do not know much, much about Islam. Sheikh Yasser Qadi started a website called the jword.org. The website is dedicated to explaining the reality of the correct concept in Islam, of jihad in Islam. On CNN.com you can find over a hundred links to Muslims, scholars, activists, and organizations who condemn violent actions against innocent civilians as a response to Muslims are not doing enough to fight against terrorism. Dr. Assam Amish, a surgeon, uh, a surgeon and Islamic activist in Northern Virginia, who also served as the president of the Muslim American Society, took part in an Islamic convention in 2005, which was a response to terrorism. That speaks against terrorism. Dr. Sheikh Salman Ouda, a well-known scholar from Saudi Arabia, who was also an ex-mentor of Osama bin Laden, as stated in the New York Times, the delivered an open and blunt address to Osama bin Laden live on TV in 2007. In it, he states that uh, he condemned Osama bin Laden for his actions on his use of violence against innocent civilians. That speaks against terrorism. Sheikh Muhammad Yusuf Aslahi, a chief patron of Project Why Islam from Pakistan, strongly condemned violent actions against civilians in his message uh, that Islam condemns this act and sees it as a wounding scar to the face of humanity. These acts speak against terrorism. CNN posted an article uh, entitled, Study, Threat of Muslim American Terrorism in U.S. Exaggerated. The study showed that Muslim American organizations and the vast majority of people that were interviewed, now listen to this, firmly reject the radical extremist ideology that justifies the use of violence to achieve political ends. In, it, the, in the article, Charles Kurzman a professor of sociology at UNC states, Muslim American communities have been active in preventing radicalization through their own actions. It is the Muslim American communities themselves who play a large role in keeping the radicalized members low through their own actions and practices, according to the study. Leaders and Muslim American organizations denounce these violent acts. 
A Danish opponent of Islam is attacked and Muslims defend his right to speak. When a would-be assassin disguised himself as a postman shot and just missed the head of Lars Hedegaard, an anti-Islam a polemicist and former newspaper editor, a cloud of suspicion immediately fell over the Muslim, the Denmark Muslim minority community. Imran Shah of Copenhagen's Islamic Society says, we knew this would be something people would try to blame on us. We knew we would have to be in the forefront and make it clear that political and religious violence is totally unacceptable in Islam. To follow up on this, Qasir Najib, a 38-year-old second-generation Dane, who his father immigrated from Afghanistan, says, we don't defend Hedegaard's views, but we do defend his right to speak. He can say whatever he wants. Another organization is our own Muslim Educational Trust that portrays Islam's name in a positive way. MET has participated in several humanitarian activities, such as Habitat for Humanity, in which students help build homes for the needy in, in their communities. Another was the food bank in which 478 pounds of food was collected and donated to the needy. Another was uh, the festival of faith where students of OIA uh, taught other faiths about Islam. These acts help to change the misconceptions that people have against Islam and portray Muslims as peaceful people. All these acts, all of them, speak against terrorism and Muslims are doing enough to fight against terrorism. Thank you. Even though Islam is a religion of peace, Muslims are not doing enough to combat extremism. As the opposition stated about all these conventions and organizations, such as Yerim Summit and Isna, these are all directed toward the practicing Muslims, not toward the general public that perceive Islam and Muslims as extremists. I am not denying that all these organizations are happening, nor am I denying that there are many, I mean many, many people who are trying to combat extremism. But how are these people making a difference? According to MSNBC, 10% of the whole Muslim population are extremists. And if these people were making a difference, this number would be not increasing but decreasing. And if these people were making a difference, we would not be labeled as terrorists. Yes, Muslims are doing all these organizations, but what else can you do that would make a great impact on the impressions that non-Muslims have over Islam and Muslims? Tom Saif Friedman. Thomas I. Friedman stated in an article in the New York Times that one of the iron rules of the Middle East politics for the last half century has been that extremists go all the way and moderates tend to just go away. Where are these extremists and what are they doing? The opposition stated that there are many Muslim websites, sheikhs, and organizations that are fighting extremism. But there are also many websites, sheikhs, and uh, organizations that are pro-extremism. And yes, the, the Yes, there are many uh, sheikhs that say, that denounce that Islam. Uh, that yes, there are many sheikhs that are pro uh, that denounce these acts of violence. But it isn't stopping people from committing terrorist acts. If they were helping, then why, according to CNN News, have Sunni Muslims committed 70 percent of the 12,533 confirmed terrorist murders in the last year? Even if these sheikhs and uh, sheikhs and Muslims denounce these acts of violence, does denouncing these acts of, of violence right the wrong done? Although Islam is a religion of peace, Muslims are not doing enough to combat extremism. There are 1.5 billion Muslims worldwide, and according to the Huffington Post, 10% of that 1.5 billion which is about 157 million Muslims, not only have extremist ideology, but act on it. We are talking about the percentage worldwide, not in specific areas. I don't know about you, but 157 million is a huge number. And the fact that the opposition says that we are doing enough is alarming, because we shouldn't have such a large number of extremists if we are indeed doing enough to educate people about extremism. We are not proposing an overnight solution, and yes, efforts are being started, but they are certainly not enough yet. There are many events that have happened over the years that have portrayed Islam as a religion of violence and intolerance, such as 9-11, where the World Trade Center in New York was destroyed, that killed 2,996 people and injured more than 6,000. The assassination of the American ambassador in Libya after the release of the video mocking the Prophet, peace be upon him. The London bombing in 2005, 
which had bomb attacks on London's transportation system that killed more than 30 people and injured around 700 people. The Madrid bombing in 2004, which killed 191 people and injured nearly 2,000 after 10 bombs destroyed four trains. These are only a few of the countless acts of violence that were said to be committed by Muslim extremists who killed and injured many, many innocent people and are giving Islam a really bad name in the media. As Muslims, we know that Islam is a religion of peace beyond a shadow of a doubt and that it came to establish perfect societies as a model and example for others. But the fact is that not all Muslims are practicing Islam the way the Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us to. Because if they did, Muslims wouldn't have such a bad name and reputation. Organizations such as Al Fest, the Islamic Society of North America, and Maghrib Institute, etc., are all definitely doing great things, but these events are targeted towards Muslims and are not doing enough to reach out to the non-Muslim general public that perceive Muslims as extremists to help them better understand the true message of peace that Islam teaches. Although Islam is a religion of peace, Muslims are not doing enough to combat extremism. As stated in the Huffington Post, there are indeed a lot of Muslims all over the world, but are they doing enough? There's a population of about 1.5 billion Muslims worldwide. About 10%, which makes up to 157 million, are, have extremist ideologies or are considered extremists. And that was stated in PBS, MSNBC, and the Huffington Post. We can always go through the easy route and just blame it all on the media, but it's our job to shape Islam and to show the loving face of Islam. It is no one's job other than ours. As stated in an article, Backlash to the Backlash, in, New in the New York Times, the world will respect us Muslims when we begin to contribute to human, human civilization. The numbers and percentages of what people believe is great. No one is disagreeing with that. But is it truly true that people, what people agree with how do we know that these percentages and numbers are really true? When is enough? Enough is when people begin to respect, accept, and treat Muslims in today's modern society just like everyone else. Enough is when one Muslim commits an act of crime, he or she is the one to blame, not all Muslims and the religion of Islam. Thank you. After the September 11 attacks, our former president characterized Islam as a religion of peace and many people agree with the fact that the majority of Muslims live peaceful lives. Um, Muslims are doing enough to combat extremism because there are many organizations that speak against, that speak against um, extremists and organizations that educate Muslims on the true peaceful ways of Islam. The opposition say that organizations uh, such as Islam are not doing enough to combat extremism because they're uh, they are aimed towards practicing Muslims. In order to combat extremism, do Muslims need to be educated by the true practices of Islam so they stop extremist acts, or do the non-Muslims need to be educated? For so many years, Islam has been and still is the fastest growing religion in the world. One of the reasons is because non-Muslims have been doing their own research about Islam, so, so, uh, so should uh, non-Muslims... Muslims are doing enough to counter extremism. Thousands of peaceful protests happened throughout the year, and one that stands out is, was in Kabul, Afghanistan. I repeat, Kabul, Afghanistan. A city where the media state is one of the most dangerous places to live in 2012. This protest had 500 Muslims attending and peacefully fighting against the video disrespecting the Prophet. Not one casualty happened and no one was harmed. Um, this, cold, this is cold hard evidence that Muslims are doing enough to counter extremism. Where Muslims gather a large mass and fight, against, fight peacefully against a, a video disrespecting the Prophet without anyone being injured. This is change. This, um, this is change that Muslims are doing enough. This protest worked and hundreds of other protests are working, uh, such as the ones in Libya and Egypt fighting against radical um, Muslims. The Quran was sent down. Islam is a religion of peace and Muslims are doing enough to combat extremism. Whenever you read about something negative in the press about Muslims, it is often followed by someone saying, where are all the moderate Muslims? 
Why are all the Muslims against extremism, against terrorism? Why aren't we hearing from them? The reality is that Muslims have been working against extremists in their community way before 9-11. As our previous president once stated, the face of terror isn't the faith of Islam. That is not what Islam is about. Islam is a religion of peace in this, and these terrorists that you read and hear about don't represent Islam. They represent evil and war. So who does represent Islam? Brothers Hanif and Antias Qadir went to Afghanistan to fight British and American troops, but what they saw there changed their thinking, their thinking completely. They understood that America was not the enemy and that that wasn't what Islam taught. Returning to Britain, they began trying to persuade other Muslims not to join Al-Qaeda. In 2007, the Muslim community, along with the Christian and Jewish community, launched the Muslim campaign in DC, which was grounded on an interfaith condemning terrorism. This community represents Islam. Muhammad Hamdani, who died on 9-11 and was found dead next to his EMT medical bag, besides him, he represents Islam. Hassan Askari, a Brooklyn Muslim who stepped into the subway and saved a complete stranger because he was being physically abused because he was Jewish, he represents Islam. And lastly, Zainab Selby, through her organization, Women for Women International, has assisted over a quarter of a million, I repeat, over a quarter of a million across the world. She represents Islam. If these examples that I previously gave doesn't change your mind, then I don't know what will, because as Muslims, it's clear that we are it's clear that we, have, we are doing enough to combat extremism and we're still striving, striving to do our best. Gandhi, an activist once said, in a gentle way, you can shake the world. Meaning you don't have to use violence to make your voice heard in the world or to make a difference. This relates to how millions of Muslims worldwide are combating extremism. Because millions of Muslims worldwide combat extremism in ways that do not include bombing or killing. However, many people tend to have the perception that these Muslims are not doing enough to combat extremism. The facts say otherwise. Take the example of 9-11, a horrific event. Along with the Amer uh, Americans that died on that horrific day, about 60 American Muslims died on 9-11. In his speech at one of the traditional iftar dinners at the White House, President Obama honored the Muslims for their help on home soil on 9-11. According to CNN, the Muslim Americans were the first responders. One of those responders included a 23-year-old man named Hamdani. Six months later, his remains were found in 34 different parts. Many Muslims, such as Abdul Malahi, a 37-year-old father of Yemeni descent, ran from floor to floor, warning guests to evacuate and, ex and leading them to steroids before he died. These heroes combated extremism by putting their lives on the line to save others because they knew that those terrorists were not religious leaders. They were extremists who could, could murder innocent human beings even if they were Muslim. Although a lot of Muslims did die in 9-11, the Muslims didn't say we're not going to help them because they're victims and they don't share the same faith. They still helped the victims of 9-11 and the families of the victims of 9-11 by donating their time, donating their money, building memorials and giving them support. The Muslims who modeled our tenacity during that horrific day inspire other Muslims to always combat extremism. These are examples of heroic people who will always be remembered, who fought extremism without ever raising a sword, but instead combated extremism by helping others, even if they are victims themselves. Resolve that Muslims are not doing enough to combat extremism. In various news sites, such as CNN, The Huffington Post, Free Republic, and U.S. News, it is stated at least once in each site that not enough Muslims are disassociating themselves with Muslim extremism. Those who do stand up are mostly composed of leaders and scholars. Leaders and scholars make up less than 1% of the Muslim population. How can you say Muslims are doing enough when the bulk of the 1.5 billion Muslims are not proving their fight against Muslim extremism? There are millions of Muslims worldwide who are combating extremism and are making things happen. This is true and I'm not denying it. But to go as far as to say that less than 10% of the Muslim population is enough to represent the rest of the 90% is being overly optimistic and just brushing the issue aside. The opposition says the people they mention are who represent Islam. But in reality, when people think of Islam 
the world sees extremists, and this is not what should be happening. How does this 10%, these millions, prove that the rest of the 1.4 plus billion other Muslims are against extremists? In basic math, negative times positive is negative. If there is extremism, then Muslims are not doing enough. If there is the negativity of extremism, the result is just going to appear negative. Yusuf Ali translates verse 42 of chapter 53, so it's in Nezim. That to thy Lord is the final goal. Muslims have a duty to represent the true way of Islam, and this duty to our religion is not over until the day we meet with our Lord. Are Muslims really doing enough to combat extremism? Resolved, Islam is a religion of peace and Muslims are doing enough to combat extremism. In 2011, thousands of Muslim scholars in India openly denounced the act of terrorism and went out to many communities within India to spread the message that terrorism is not a part of Islam. A small but growing Muslim woman organization based in the UK goes out and educates women how to prevent and combat extremism within their own communities. And in 2011, at the eight, in 2009, at the age of 11, Malala, a Pakistani schoolgirl, spoke out against the terrorist, terrorist foes in her city because she wanted an education to pursue her dream to become a doctor. After, and at the age of 14, she was shot in the head and the neck. After she was, after she recovered, she was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize, and and she, and she became a major symbol for combating extremism. After the U.S. ambassador was assassinated. By, uh, by the Libyan extremists uh, for the Prophet Muhammad movie that was made that mocked him, the Muslim community in Libya did not just turn a blind eye. No, they, they were, the community leaders led and captured a terrorist base and brought the terrorist foes to justice. According to the Huffington Post, according to the Huffington Mo Post, Muslims who aren't involved in terrorist acts and don't publicly denounce terrorism do not necessarily support it. However, there are Muslims, despite having their lives in danger due to extremist date risks, who go out and speak out against extremist organizations. Sadly enough, such acts end up as the Huffington Post also stated, generally ignored. The Free Muslims Coalition Against Terrorism, the Muslim Public Affairs Council, the Council on American Islamic Relations, and nearly all other Muslim groups are strictly anti-extremist and publicly denounce extremism. Muslims have used interfaith groups, conventions, fatwas by Islamic scholars, the internet, and many other methods to combat not only extremism, but also all other forms of violence. The vanquishing of terrorism is an event that has never once occurred throughout the history of humanity. And it is illogical to expect such a thing from any one religion, people, or country. An, extremism does, an extremist does not represent any one specific religion or belief. However, an extremist threatens anyone and everyone regardless of religion, belief, nationality, race, gender, and etc. Even so, Muslims are already going all out against a threat that puts their own lives on the line. Muslims have taken all necessary steps against extremism because the only steps left are that of war and violence. Fighting fire with fire, after all, only results in ashes. Although Islam is a religion of peace, Muslims are not doing enough to combat extremism. The opposition stated several individuals that risked their lives to save another and said that they represent Islam. But the truth is, they don't. Because if they did, why would all Muslims be labeled extremists? The small population of Muslim extremists are giving the whole religion a bad name and all Muslims have to live with that. The opposition also stated several conventions and people that denounce uh, uh, extremist acts. 
and uh, these conventions and gatherings are good, and they um, these conventions come together and bring ideas, but they're just coming together and talking and trying to find ways, but they're not having action. The opposition also stated several sheikhs that give fatwas and uh, lectures about um, how they find uh, uh, extremism wrong, and those fatwas and lectures are just saying that um, the sheikh or the scholar doesn't believe in what the extremists are doing and that is wrong. The opposition stated that when an attack is made on Islam, people usually ask where are the moderates. The truth is, is that these moderates are, are remaining silent and they're not putting their voice into this fight. And when they're silenced, silence is mutual acceptance. These people are indirectly taking the side of the terrorists. The people who attacked the embassy in Libya were indeed uneducated Muslims, and they did not know the main principles of Islam, which are peace and cooperation. It is our job, as the mainstream Muslims, to educate these people who do not know much about Islam, the true meaning and the true values of Islam, which are peace and cooperation. And if they knew the true meaning of Islam, these attacks would not have happened, and a lot of the attacks that did happen wouldn't have happened if they knew the true meaning of Islam. The reason Malala, the Afghani girl, was shot was because of her, of her hopes for women's education. Her intentions were not to combat extremism, and she is only known for uh, having her voice to speak, uh, to speak for women's education. It is possible to influence the extremists that their actions are wrong. Muslims just need to put more efforts into their actions, because with the way things are going, we're not getting anywhere. We are getting somewhere, but it's not enough to influence every extremist that their actions are wrong. Islam is a religion of peace, and Muslims are doing enough to combat extremism. The opposition would have you believe that the number of extremists make up a large portion of the Muslim population, and this number is currently on the rise. Contrary to popular belief, extremists make up less than 0.00% of the Muslim population. Gallup Research Group recently conducted a poll which shows that 7% of Muslims are what they consider radical, as opposed to the 10% stated by the opposition, which is quoted from Glenn Beck, a well-known propagator of bigotry against Islam. These, these specific numbers do not display, do not reflect violent behavior. In fact, these people may agree with extremism, but they don't always carry out actions. In addition, the poll also shows that these people, their radical ideas, ideas come, come from political agendas rather than religious ones. Islam is a religion of peace, and Muslims are doing enough to combat extremism. Some non-Muslims perceive Islam as unpeaceful because of the violence they see in the media and how jihad is being portrayed. The media often portrays Islam as a religion of violence by using the word jihad. They say that jihad in Islam is holy war, but there is no concept of holy war in Islam. Islam clearly prohibits all kinds and forms of aggression, except when it comes to self-defense. David Schanzer, an associate professor in Duke Stanford School of Public Policy and director of Stanford School of Public Policy, um, Director of the Triangle Center on Terrorism and Homeland Security of uh, Security states in a statement, the Muslim American organizations and the vast majority that we interviewed firmly reject the radical extremist ideology that justifies the use of violence to achieve political ends. Not only that, but Muslim American communities have been active in preventing radicalization. This is why, this is one reason that the Muslim American terrorism has resulted in fewer than three dozen of the 136,000 murders committed in the United States. In many of these areas affected by terrorism, the majority of Muslims are becoming fed up with the minority who seem to represent them. They are standing up to extremism in different ways. It is the international foundations and organizations like the Islamic Relief, the Life for Relief and Development, the Muslim Aid, the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, the ICNA Relief, and the Mercy USA for Aid and Development. It is these people who represent Islam. It is true that we, we as Muslims need to educate people about the different things that we are doing, but when you have a misinformed minority who don't know the truth about Islam and are taking ayahs out of context, then you have a recipe for disaster. Perception is sometimes different than the reality, and the reality is that Muslims are doing enough to combat extremism.
Muslims are not doing enough to combat extremism because there's a growing population of Muslim extremists all around the world. And the number of schools in Pakistan that teach extremists Islam has more than doubled since 9-11. This may be because the autocrats of Muslim countries are suppressing extremist voices but doing nothing to counter them. This is not to say that no Muslims are speaking out about this issue, because many, many are, and Muslim youth especially, are engaged in activities all around their community to help improve Islam's name. But what we really need, though, are powerful, influential um, Muslim leaders who can promote Islam's core ideals, some of which are peace, mercy, and tolerance. Some extremist Muslims may act out violently when they feel an injustice has been done to them, and their anger is understandable. But defending Islam should be through peace, value, cultures, and tolerance, not storming embassies and murdering diplomats. The opposition has brought up Muslim organizations trying to educate people about Islam, but the most prominent Muslim American group, the Council on American-Muslim Relations, has become so politically toxic in recent years that it really has no influence. Finally, improving Islam's name is a huge job and will take a very long time, but the effort has not yet been enough to expel extremist actions and remove the violent connotations attached to the word Islam. Muslims are not doing enough to combat extremism. And even when they are doing something, they're not being hurt. One issue is getting Arab countries and their leaders to give their citizens the freedom of speech. Without the freedom of speech, people resort to committing acts of violence instead of expressing themselves in a peaceful way. Organizations such as Ahlul Summit, ISNA, and Al Maghrib Institute are directed towards practicing Muslims, not non-Muslims that are ill-informed about Islam. We need to get those non-Muslims to be well-informed about Islam and its practices. If the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, saw his own followers calling for the death of others, he would be appalled. He would be extremely appalled. Islam is not about calling the death of others or, or killing others. It's about kindness and reconciliation. Enough is when people hear the word Muslim and Islam and think of kind and peaceful people, not terrorists and violence, because those two words do not define who Muslims really are. Please know that the debate was very, very close. In fact, we had to count several times because some of the folk up here don't know how to act. <laughs> <laughs> and only one of us had a little calculator. I tried, but I have the dumbest phone in the world. Well, forget it. Anyway, thank you so much. We really had a great time listening to you. And I love how it went. You know, we said, oh boy, this, you know, this team has, has it made. And then the other team would come through with some really powerful argumentation and said, wow, it just swung back and forth. It was very, very close. But the judges barely, barely affirmed the affirmative side. So the affirmative side. In reality, there were no losers, because uh, brothers and sisters over here, you were magnificent. You were magnificent. So thank you all very much for your wonderful event.